Happy Friday, folks. We love Friday here on this channel. Best day of the week for sure. Back from vacation, now we get to do news and rumors videos that are particularly to that said day. Had a really get great vacation. Appreciate everybody uh, showing some love and leaving comments on the videos that I did. But today, we're going to go ahead and shift towards to, the, to some Detroit Lions news here. And we got a lot to cover in today. We're going to be talking about Terry and Arnold. And is he an instant impact player? People believe so. Jared Goff is one of the best clutch quarterbacks in the NFL. Stats came out. I'm going to show you why that's really important. Should the Detroit Lions add a couple players on the defensive line? We're going to get in that. The defensive line rankings, really high per PFF. Without further ado, let's go. Before we get this show started right now, rank the Detroit Lions defensive line compared to the rest of the NFL. One, if you think they're the best. 32, if you think they're the worst. Let's get into here because we're going to talk about PFF giving some mad love to the Detroit Lions because they rank the Detroit Lions pass rush in defensive line fourth in the NFL. It says, for a while, the Lions had Aiden Hutchinson and not much anyone else on the defensive line. Now they will deploy DJ Raider and improved Aleem McNeil along with Marcus Davenport on the latest Prove It deal. This is unquestionably the best group the Lions have had around Aiden Hutchinson, who himself racked up 101 quarterback pressures last season on his way to 91.2 PFF pass rushing grade. Like I said before, PFF ranks the Detroit Lions defensive line fourth in the NFL with only the Jets, 49ers, and Eagles ahead of them. And that's quite a, of a shock of a ranking, if you ask me, because right now, if you were to ask me about the Lions defensive line, it would be uh, farther back. It'd be more of a, of a mid-round around the NFL. But PFF, they believe it's to be four, and I do like the fact that they talk about uh, DJ Reader and the importance that he brings upon Ali McNeil right next to him. That's important, but there is question marks about Marcus Davenport. Is he better than Romeo Aquara, Julian Aquara, Charles Harris? We hope so because they didn't really do anything, and they do believe that this is the best group around Aiden Hutchinson, and I concur with that sentiment. I think this is the best group around Aiden Hutchinson, but with that said, it doesn't necessarily mean I think they have them as a top four defensive line unit in the NFL. I truly hope they, I tell you what, if at the end of the year they are ranked four on the defensive line or, or somewhere near that, the Lions probably going to the Super Bowl and winning that bad boy because the defensive line was a problem for us last year. So question for you, where do you rank the Detroit Lions defensive line? Do you rank it four like PFF? Put a number in the comments below. Let's continue on here and talking about the Detroit Lions roster. Here's I went on scratching and clawing, the, looking at a hole for the Detroit Lions roster, said Albert Breer. They could, I suppose, add a receiver, but I don't know taking on one of the reclamation projects left the position would do much for you. Offensive line depth would be good to have maybe someone like Connor Williams, although I'm sure that it doesn't move the needle for you. Ditto with the defensive tackle and safety continue on here and talks about and that brought me to the idea of adding a pass rusher to station opposite of Aiden Hutchinson Beer explained right now the Lions probably would start Marcus Davenport there which isn't a huge problem but probably requires a little more depth along those lines adding a veteran such as Yannick Ngakwe and Emmanuel Agba would make sense now and we've been talking about the adding players on the defensive line and of course Agba and Yannick Ngakwe has come in those conversations, and that's what Albert Breer believes when he looks at this. He thinks the Detroit Lions roster is superb, one of the best in football, but he said potentially they could add players uh, to this defensive line in free agency. And I I like that idea. I think that they could do, say if they wanted to bring in a Yannick Ngakwe, that X absolutely could do that, or an Emmanuel Agba, but I just don't think that's what the Detroit Lions are going to do. This my, my take here is they're going to let this battle play out through training camp, maybe in a couple preseasons games. And if we're not doing well, if they don't see progress by then, maybe they'll add a free agent or make a move to add talent to that defensive line. But if you know what we have been watching with Brad Holmes, Dan Campbell, they really trust the process of bringing in the players that they like. They brought in Devin Port. And I fully expect them to use them, and that's 
the end all be all for them in free agency upon that defensive line. But you got to understand too, DJ Reader is going to help out uh, r- reduce double teams for Aiden Hutchinson, so that could open it up for the Davenports, for the Kaminsky's, the Joshua Pascals, and even anyone else. It's going to open it up for him. So Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell may be, but correct to probably just stand pat and let this thing play out because they know they got other talent that's going to help them. Look, this is a major year for the Lions, and I would not be opposed for the Lions adding a player in free agency or if they wanted to add a player via trade before the trade deadline upon this defensive line. For me personally, when I look at this whole team, I think that's, you know, the the edge position is the one that could use talent, could be added talent. But just like Breer says, I don't think it's a must, but they could because the roster all around is really good. And if that defensive line is good as PFF thinks, and we don't need to add talent like Albert Breer was talking about, the Detroit Lions got a really, really, really good shot to be the team in 2024 because just the roster is so stacked besides the pass rush. And I think it's all right, but it's not stacked. So that's what he was talking there, and I kind of agree with him right there. So question for you, should the Lions sign a pass rusher before training camp? As for sign, if you believe so, P for pass if you do not want them to make a signing upon that defensive line. Let's go ahead and talk about Jared Goff and a metric. Thank you to Pride of Detroit. We need to talk about, and that's the clutch metric here. Jared Goff is a clutch, clutch, clutch type of quarterback. We have been talking about it on this channel for, for, for a couple years now, right? That clutch absolutely should be part of a quarterback ranking. We talk about the physical aspects, the running, the athleticism, the throwing of the football, the spiral, but you got to throw clutch in there. And I know it is not a stat that you see a lot, but Jared Goff is clutch, and he's one of the best in football. And here's the proof to tell you about him. Fourth quarterback passer rating, 102, six in the NFL. Really good. Fourth quarter completion percentage, 99.5, tenth in the NFL. Third down passer rating, one of the best in football, 72.2, second in the NFL. And third down touchdowns, nine tied for seventh. And you can always put on there those big down, big fourth down plays as well as the Detroit Lions tend to do pretty good compared to the rest of the NFL on fourth down, even though that's particularly great. But it just shows that Jared Goff is a clutch, clutch, clutch fellow. He sure is. And we have to put that in the rankings. We have to. If you don't put clutch in there, you're not properly ranking quarterbacks because it's not just the stuff that you can see, you know, with yards or touchdowns and interceptions or perceptions of the player, you have to go by what they're doing. And clearly, in in the clutch situations, Jared Goff is one of the best in football, period. And unfortunately, a lot of the media types do not look at that aspect of a quarterback's game, the ice in the veins aspect, when I when I 110% believe that absolutely should be the case. You should absolutely... 110% add clutch to the mix. So question for you, where do you rank Jared Goff compared to the rest of the NFL starting quarterbacks with clutch? One being the best, 32 being the worst. Blow up the comment section with your thoughts. We got some things I want to talk about before training camp and what we need to pay attention to. And here are five things that I think that you all should be watching for The up-and-coming training camp right here. And the Lions' new secondary is going to be really fun to watch in training camp. That's my number one. Tyrion Arnold, Carlton Davis, Amik Robertson, Brian Branch, all these guys, how they gel together with this season coming up here. Lions' defensive line, we just got done talking about it. Can they gel? Will they gel? Will this defensive line do much better than years past? 
We got to wait and see. The wide receiver three battle is going to be fun to watch. I do think it's Khalif Raymond's to win it, but Donovan Peoples Jones is in there as well. The linebacker battle between Jack Campbell and Derek Barnes. Those two are going to have at it to see who gets the playing time. Of course, the kicking battle as we got two kickers left in Badgley and Jake Bates. Who is going to win that one out there? That is what we're wanting to see for this bad boy right there. So for me, it's going to be a good battle. It's going to be epic. And it's going to be fun to watch all the battles this year because the winner will be the starter and the loser is still really good because the depth is outstanding. Let's get in here and talk about Shade Rotary. He says, cornerback was the top need of the draft for the Lions, who would be willing to move up for Arnold and was still available at 24. He combined the veteran track acquisition Carlton Davis and the second rounder Ennis Rakestraw to help fortify the position, Chad said. I expect Arnold to attack the balls for the Detroit Lions, likely intercepting and breaking up multiple passes as quarterbacks test rookies with the former Alabama teammate Brian Branch handling nickel duties. The good thing is that you have to prove it, said defensive backs coach Desha Townsend, the rep doesn't matter when you start it, when you get it. You have to make the most of it, and that's what we're here for. We are here to compete. We got a room full of players who's ready out there to prove it, and that's we have to do every single day. And this is why that Terry and Arnold's going to be such an impact player as a corner, even though he's a rookie because he's fast, he's sticky, he's confident, he's playmaking, he's already a starter. This is completely different from what we saw with rookie Jeffrey Okuda, whom we drafted uh, early a couple of years ago in, with the third overall pick. Is You aren't seeing this, but in Terry and Arnold, you're seeing everything really good. He's going to be an impact player game one. He's going to make rookie mistakes, but he's an impact player, and that's going to be so big for the Lions this year as they're trying to win a Super Bowl. And you need to have players ready to play immediately to get that done. So I got a question for you. Will Terry and Arnold be an instant impact for the Detroit Lions? Why for yes and for no? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. We're dropping videos every single day. Smash that like button. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest Detroit Lions news and rumors. With that said, folks, 